So, two weeks ago, I made a video defending Sydney Sweeney. And the summary of that video was basically saying that I felt like she was a bit misunderstood and people were overlooking her acting potential because of her sex appeal. And that maybe it was a double-edged sword that could potentially work against her in the future as she gets older and could maybe limit her ability to be taken seriously as an actress, which I hope is not the case for her. Now, this wasn't a video that was meant to be particularly mind-blowing or shocking. It was just me sharing my thoughts on how the blonde bombshell has been viewed, such as what happened to Marilyn Monroe and how she was a very intelligent woman who ultimately was very lonely and very misunderstood because of her public image, which is obviously just the way of Hollywood, which is that sex sells and it's all about appearance. And obviously most of my comments were just really getting it and it was a really thoughtful discussion, but there was, which isn't a surprise to me, a small portion of people who just really were not getting it and just did not completely overlooked everything that I said in that video. All I was saying is that basically she's got big boobs on a small frame like I do and it's unusual and it can affect how people view you. And so many people were getting so heated and reactive, which is crazy because I'm talking about such a simple topic. In that video, I also discussed my personal experience as a girl growing up with big boobs. And sometimes I try to hide them or I wear stuff that's showing less cleavage like today, like it's not really as obvious. But in that video, I showed more. But I was basically saying that regardless of what you do or don't wear, people perceive you a certain way when they meet you and you have big boobs because it's kind of obvious you've got something regardless of if you wear a turtleneck or not. And a lot of you, especially my viewers who have bigger boobs themselves, were saying that even when they're at work and wear a turtleneck thinking they're being classy and covering up, they then get sexualized for doing that with their boss saying things like, oh, you look so sexy with that turtleneck. It shows even more, leaves even more to the imagination. And you realize that when you have big boobs, you are simultaneously fetishized and ostracized for it. There's a huge double standard. You can't wear the same thing that a girl with smaller boobs wears without being called a hoe or desperate for attention or just being viewed as a very sexual being, even if you're not at all. When you have big boobs, there's many benefits and I'm glad I have them. I have no issue with having them, but there's many things that people don't know about unless you've got them because it's not really talked about that often but it's a constant weight. Like, I don't mean an emotional weight. I mean a physical weight. I'm constantly aware of them. They're so like heavy on my back and everywhere I move, no matter what I, I do, I'm just aware of them. And the only reason why it's not annoying is because like I'm used to them. But if they were any bigger, it would actually become annoying. Like, cause it hurts to lie on your stomach, you know? People treat it like a commodity that is sort of publicly owned by everyone. And so when girls say they want to get a boob reduction, so many people don't factor in the fact that maybe they feel more comfortable that way and their lifestyle's better and people are like, oh my gosh, no, they look good, so you shouldn't get them reduced. And in many ways, there are huge advantages. You can get pretty privileged because of them. You can get certain opportunities because you stand out and it's unusual and it fits the Western beauty standards and historically they have been viewed as very attractive so I'm not denying that. You just get such nasty looks sometimes or nasty comments. People just can be so jealous and so mean about something that's completely outside of your control but most of this hatred is coming from women. That video I made was never intended, like the point was never to victimize her and say, oh my gosh, this Hollywood actress is having the worst life. Like, no, she's in, she's in the top echelon of society, okay? She's in the top 1%. I remember recently, who knows if it was for PR or what, because the whole thing's fake in Hollywood, but she had said pretty recently that she feels out of control with how people view her body and the sexualize, sexualization of her body is kind of making her a bit uncomfortable. And that's the case for so many actresses. And it's just this very, like, it's just, it's always the way they use their body to get into Hollywood because you need to, to get attention very often times to, or, you know, people just cast you in more sexy roles because of your body type. And that may be outside of your control. Sometimes when you're first starting out as an actress, then you know, you're going to be sexualized or you assume you're going to be sexualized either way. So you just sort of give up on trying to be taken seriously. And sometimes you embrace 
the boobs, you embrace the body you were given and you try and like lean more into the sexualization so you feel like you have some power or control over it. It all kind of spins out of your control and you realize that you never had any to begin with. In Hollywood, on social media, objectifying women is like such a big part of it now and you feel a pressure to show that off and to flaunt that in order to succeed, in order to like use your, your sex appeal and many don't but you know it's very like it's hard because it's just what sells and that's just the fact of life. Oh my god, that's actually really good. So let's get into the problem with leaning into it at all and posting some more provocative stuff like Sydney Sweeney has on her Instagram or doing some roles like she did where you're topless for Euphoria, for example. Even if you have just a few bikini photos up there and then some very respectable, more covered up posts or you just show cleavage one time to a red carpet event, people will just remember the few times that you did show off your body because it is irreversible and it does make an impression. You can't erase it and you certainly can't erase people's first impressions of you and I think a lot of people associate Sydney Sweeney with her character in Euphoria because that was her breakout role, that was her main thing, which was a very sexualized character. And Sam Levinson is not really someone I particularly like with the way that he portrays his female characters and it comes through and it seeps into how people perceive Sydney Sweeney herself because they cannot differentiate the actress from the character. And the character was someone who was very desperate for male validation. Sydney's Instagram like isn't just her boobs. I mean, they're on there, I'm not gonna deny that, but she also shows her hobbies, her holidays, her passion for sports. And again, in order to really feel like you look good, at least for me as someone who's skinny with big boobs, you do need to wear tailored and fitted clothes that kind of cinch you in. Otherwise you just feel really like big and like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel good. And that doesn't mean you're self-sexualizing. It just means that you want to have clothes that fit you properly. A lot of how you're perceived on Instagram, for example, is not just what you're wearing, although that's a factor, but it's the poses themselves. And there's a big difference in tone that's conveyed when you show a lot more skin and you pose a certain way compared to when you just stand upright in a more prim and kind of casual way without like doing a sexual pose. And if a woman does want to capitalize on her sexiness here and there, Okay, cool, that shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't then just make her an object or a commodity. We should be allowed to be sexual sometimes without people therefore assuming that's all we are and therefore we deserve to be demeaned and degraded or therefore apparently, which really drives me nuts by the way, all our accomplishments and acting skills and achievements mean nothing because we're hot. And it annoys me when people say that women are self-objectifying or self-sexualizing when they choose to wear a pretty outfit to a red carpet event because it's blaming the object and not the viewer. When the viewer, like the creepy men for example, they're the ones having the creepy gross thoughts. They're the ones saying the nasty things and just viewing her as an object. That's not her doing that. And by blaming her, you're taking away all the responsibility from the people who are being gross. And I'm not saying that she's like the best actress I've ever seen. I think she's definitely not the best I've ever seen, but she deserves way more credit than people give her. And I heard some people saying that she's hiding her fiance because she has a whole fiance that no one knows about, which is also like a really stupid argument because she's perfectly entitled to keep her relationship private and secure if she wants to. I also saw a comment on my last video saying that Sydney needs an ugly role. And whilst I agree because I think it would be a bit of a good PR move to change people's perceptions and she needs to do more movies like reality where she's playing the ugly role, it also annoys me because why can't we just take people seriously as actors when they're good looking. Like, why do they have to be like ugly and talented? I, I genuinely don't understand that. Another thing I talked about was in the last video, how her dresses don't fit properly. And I had absolutely no idea whether it was some sort of weird intentional move because sometimes her boobs are literally popping out of the cup. But when I go shopping sometimes, I'll insert some clips above here or photos. It was just embarrassing a few weeks ago. I went to the shopping mall just for fun, tried some stuff on. 
just looks so bad. And also if it has a built-in cup, even worse, because your boob, the cup's here and your boob's coming out from like under the cup or the side boob, the whole side boob is just out. And like, sometimes I guess you can be into that. But for me, it just, it makes me uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't want that much side boob to be out. Like my whole boob is out. And, it's annoying. And I noticed that sometimes Sydney was on red carpet events and I was like, that doesn't even remotely fit. Like not even a little bit. And I'm sure some of her stuff is custom made, but surely not every item is like tailored to fit her. And one of my commenters, I mean, I still don't know if this is true or not, but said, um, a lot of dresses for red carpets are loaned out by fashion houses and they don't always customize the dress and they just send sample sizes. Sydney spoke about that with her partnership with Miu Miu because they were one of the few to actually tailor it and she's excited to have red carpet clothes that fit. So I definitely know what they're doing but they have to work with what they're loaned and that's how these celebrities are wearing certain outfits and jewelry to most red carpet events. And something like the Met Gala where they're creating something from scratch for the celebrity is not the norm and can take months of years to prep or months or years to prep. So who really knows, but 100% if you're being sent like sample dresses, like here you go, like this brand wants you to wear this for the event, put it on, the chances of it actually fitting are very slim. And I did have quite a few of these comments, for example, who I don't think are from my regular subscribers, but I'm not sure saying Sydney knows what she's doing and is using whatever she can to promote her career. Do not present her as a child who cannot understand what people around her advise her with, which I never did. So I don't, I don't really understand that comment. Um, I think she's a decent actress, but although people shouldn't harass her, you can't blame people for talking about her looks. And I agree with that. Like it makes sense to talk about her looks, right? Um, another one saying, you're not going to change the way society feels about beautiful women with big boobs. The solution is to stop reading social media comment sections that are not indicative of real life and just filled with creeps and haters. Now, this one was interesting because I 100% agree that social media is not real life. And it's true for sure that people will literally say whatever on social media that they would never dare to say to you in real life. However, there are creeps and haters, unfortunately, on the streets, in life, at your school, at your job, at your university. I'm not just speaking from my own experience now, by the way, I'm trying to point to like a larger societal thing because I saw dozens and dozens of comments on my last YouTube video with girls who were saying, you know, I'm an E cup, I'm a double D cup. And they were talking about their really negative experiences with the way that their, their boobs made them feel so uncomfortable and so disassociated from their body because they had these boobs that they didn't really know what to do with that made them be viewed a certain way that they didn't know how to handle. And so they just felt so kind of disconnected from their body. And the grass is always greener on the other side, right? Because a lot of these women were saying, I actually really resent my boobs. I wish I was born with just medium sized boobs, you know, but not like really big boobs. So let's get into the whole, she's not a victim, she knows what she's doing argument because this one just irritates me. First of all, I have no problem with people complimenting her and no problem with people saying she's sexy. I just think that if someone's being creepy, that's on them, not on Sydney. Second of all, what really bothers me is people have a real problem with women monetizing or capitalizing on their own sexuality and intentionally using their assets to get ahead in their career. But yeah, these same people are insanely hypocritical and there's such a double standard because they say that and they take this moral high ground around the importance of being more conservative. But then those are the same people who go and watch corn, which is a billion dollar industry or watch girls secretly on OnlyFans. Or another perfect example is how people see a girl who looks pretty on Instagram and her comment section is flooded full of people saying, OnlyFans detected, opinion rejected. Assuming she has an OnlyFans when she doesn't. And she literally doesn't. And you go to her page and there's not a single link to any kind of website or an OnlyFans. People's brains are so ruined by porn and especially in America, it's such a hyper-sexualized age that a woman, a woman can't do anything without people assuming like it's for an OnlyFans. Or people thinking, okay, she's hot. Therefore, she's like trying to manipulate me and like she's doing it on purpose to like attract me or something. Like, even though she's just pretty and you're just attracted to her and that's the end of it. Like, it doesn't mean she has an OnlyFans. And no, everyone blames the girls like producing 
videos on Instagram or on OnlyFans or being pretty, but no one ever, ever criticizes the consumer because the only reason we have a market for things like OnlyFans is because there's a massive demand coming from somewhere. And also, isn't it better that women post stuff on Instagram that they feel comfortable posting that's within like their comfort range rather than like being forcefully sexualized by someone else? Like at least we have some level of autonomy when we choose to post what we want to post on our own social media or wear what we want to wear that we feel good in to a red carpet event. I think people are genuinely threatened by a woman who feels powerful and in control of her own body and her own sexuality and her own social media. So do these people actually, this is my question, genuinely, do these people genuinely care about modesty or are they just uncomfortable that a woman has the sense of power for once? Men have always loved video game characters with sexy female characters with big boobs. They've always watched corn. Like it's not a new thing. And again, this whole she deserves to be bullied online thing, okay, that's like saying a woman deserves to be assaulted because she's wearing a short skirt in public. Like, how about we blame the person that actually came up and did something bad to her because they clearly don't understand boundaries, as opposed to the girl who was just living her life and wearing something she looked pretty in. Like, it's just silly. I just don't believe in blaming the person who's been hurt or victimized. I think it's ridiculous. So the whole center and point of my first Sydney Sweeney video was not to victimize her. Clearly she's doing very well. It was just to point out the complexities between how we perceive women with smaller boobs, women with bigger boobs, the pressure to be sexualized in Hollywood because it's happened to many beautiful women. And by the way, I'm not saying you need to like her. I'm not saying you need to think she's a perfect person and a perfect actress. I've heard many things about her that people have found questionable or her lying about something for a PR move or apparently there was one interview she did where it just came across as really tone deaf and the headlines themselves were really tone deaf because she'd said something about how acting doesn't pay as much as you think these days because of streaming and how she can't just take six months off work and many people were like oh my gosh that's such a terrible thing to say like it's just so bad because no one can afford to take six months off work and it's overlooking her own privilege or she's pretending to have this poor background that she didn't actually have for a PR move and so she's been criticized for quite a few things recently so I'm not like trying to say that you need to just ignore that and like her like no you should do your research and decide if you like her or not. Someone also pointed out in my last video that her business degree thing is not necessarily true it seems to be something that was maybe kind of exaggerated or fabricated again as a PR thing to present her in a certain way to the public and it's not good to lie in general but I'm not even surprised because Hollywood backstory lies are just so common. But see I don't mind if you guys criticized her for that because that's like a legitimate thing to look into and research and criticize somebody for that's not just based on hating them because they've got big boobs. So criticize her for something legitimate rather than oh she, I don't like her because she's a pick me because she did a romance movie with Glenn Powell and she clearly wants to get with him, which is just stupid. And part of the problem for sure is that her team is not doing her justice. They keep giving her roles, like rom-coms and stuff that just don't really work for her. Like sure, it's giving her range, but it doesn't really suit her. Like movies, she doesn't really suit movies. From what I've seen, I feel like she needs a bit more time to really get into a character and understand them and flesh them out like in Euphoria. And some people just, like don't suit certain roles as well. Like she does not suit the rom-com vibe and she needs more dramas and thrillers. And people really didn't like Madame Web. They were saying it's like terrible and they're surprised that she was in it. And sometimes, I don't know if this will happen for her, but I do know it happens to other women in Hollywood where they feel a pressure to let's say, show their boobs or something because they're just getting into Hollywood and they need to get noticed. So that gives them their big break and their opportunity to get seen. And they're like, yes, I did it. Excellent, you know, I'm sex sells. But then as they get more and more into their role, they're really struggling to get a role where there isn't a topless scene or something because obviously in order to get bums on seats at the cinema, often the, the writers and producers are like, okay, let's have you be topless for the scene or, you know, in a cleavage showing top for the, the movie promo so more people come to see it. And then it becomes harder to kind of get out of that box. Especially if your initial break to stardom was through being sexy. It can be, it can take a bit of work to kind of move out of that. And some people do it very successfully. Like I think Scarlett Johansson is a good example. Um, but others 
don't do it so well and sometimes it's easier for other actresses like Anne Hathaway for example because her big break was kind of playing the ugly duckling role in the princess diaries so people got to see her as as more than just being pretty but it really depends I think and again people really struggle to differentiate between the characters you play in a show and then like the actor who plays them. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my work. And it's only $2 a month if you want to see more from me. The next video after this one that starts playing will be my first Sydney Sweeney video in case you missed it.